Hi everybody, we're gonna talk about how you can take your slab that you pre-rolled and let get leather hard and start constructing your box. So first of all, you don't really wanna cut your pieces until they are closer to leather hard. So if you notice, this still has some wiggle. We don't want it to be so hard that you can't wiggle it at all. But if I were to hold it up, it's holding its shape, right? It's not slumping down. So you're kind of looking for a mix between plastic and leather hard. And if it's not hard enough, the fan's a great place for you to go and wet it down. So we're gonna cut out each of our components. I already cut out my two straight sides. If you remember, if you have anything that needs to be rounded, that you cut out at the beginning. And so this piece is still very plastic. So I will show you that in a little bit. We're gonna talk about how you can cut to keep it very clean and specific. So I used a ruler for my straight edges already. And then for my rounded edges, I'm just kind of taking my time with cutting it, uh, trying to keep my knife as vertical as possible as I cut. So I can cut whatever part makes sense, but you want it to be as straight as possible because your clay is thicker than a piece of paper. So if you cut on an angle, it changes things quite a bit. All right. so. This is one of the sides of my piece, but it's easiest if you start with a big side and then you build on top of it. So I could take my slabs and build them on the outside, but that changes the measurements a little bit of the slabs that you need, and it makes it so it's less structurally uh, sound. So instead, I'm gonna build right on top of my, my other piece. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scratch and slip the entire border here. If you notice, I'm using a fork. We have extra forks at the front of the room. You can also use your needle tool for this, but a fork can go a little bit faster because it's got four prongs instead of one. You might also notice my scratches are deep. So if you look closely, they're not just tiny little scratches. I'm really opening up the whole surface. That is critical for this process because the clay is a little bit harder, so it doesn't attach as easily unless you really open up the surface of your clay. I also took one of my walls, scratched the edges of that up, and then I scratched one side of it here. As you set your pieces up, you can kind of figure out whether you need to clean up the end of it or scratch the end of it or the inside. So in this case, I scratched the inside because my next piece will fit in just like this. And so on this one, I'll scratch the end of it. All right, so for my attaching, now that I've scratched the pieces up, I've got my slip, right? I'm putting that on in the groove because we know we need that to attach. Glaze or slip doesn't instantly dry, so you have to give it a little bit of time. But when I set it on there, I'm gonna do something a little bit extra. I'm actually gonna zoom in for you. So, <clears throat> I'm going to press down. And if you notice that slip looks like it's oozing out, it's a really important thing to make sure that you're really fusing the two together. Now I'm gonna take my finger, I'm gonna wipe that slip away, just so I get a little bit of the extra off. And then my final piece is that all important Band-Aid coil. So I just rolled a very quick little worm here doesn't have to be pretty. You can do part of it at a time, but I'm setting it on the seam. I like to take my thumb then. I'm kind of just smoothing it into the seam. If you need, you can take a tool to kind of help clean that up. I'm just using a smaller finger and kind of smoothing it in. So then I would do the same with this other end that I still have to address. So you really need to do that with all of your seams. Uh, you could do it on the outside too. So if we go and look at the outside of my seam, it's pretty ugly over here too. So best practice would say to do it on the outside too. So just clean up that form. All right, let's go back a little bit. All right, so as I mentioned, my next piece, I would be scratching the bottom and scratching the edge so that it would line up here. You might notice from looking at this, it's a little longer than the piece that I have here. So because clay is thicker than paper, you might have to modify your pieces slightly to get them to fit. So this one I would actually go slice off that little extra that I see, and then I'd slip and score it on. All right, so let's say I did both of those angular pieces. I wanna talk about the softer, kind of uh, more curvy piece. All right, so same thing, the very bottom of it, I'm gonna be using my fork 
and I'm gonna be scratching along that edge so that it is more torn up and ready to attach to the other piece. And then when I'm ready, I'll put my slip on just like I did the first time. Okay, pretend I did it all the way around. And now, oh, I gotta scratch the end because it's gonna line up with this other slab that I have. And now I'm gonna set it on and start to press it down to kind of mold into the shape that I need, okay? Now I didn't slip and score all the way. This is just so I can show you quickly as we go. So same thing as before, I wanna see that slip ooze. So I'm just applying a little bit of pressure. You have to be a little more careful because the wall is soft as you go. Okay, and then just like before too, I would go back with my Band-Aid coil on the inside, clean it up, make sure these walls really attach to one another as well. So I do all my walls and then after that, slip and score the top and I'd put my final piece right on, slip and score to close it up.